Hello, this is Sarah Brosh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So now I'm going to read my blog post and then the actual letter, the actual character letter from Yale philosophy professor Zoltan Zabo that was an exhibit as part of my response to the false charge of racial harassment that was levied against me by Yale grad school Dean Lynn Cooley in June 2018. So here's my blog post, and then I'll read the actual letter. I am going to be posting the character letters that were written on my behalf that were part of my exhibits attached to my response to the grossly false and defamatory charge of racial harassment levied against me by Yale Graduate School Dean Lynn Cooley in June 2018 following the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale University. I will, of course, only be posting those character letters for which I have received permission from the authors. Here is the character letter from Yale philosophy professor Zoltan Zabo. I consider Zoltan a dear friend. He is an esteemed and distinguished professor of philosophy and linguistics at Yale. He has also been the director of graduate studies during most of my time at Yale. I have taken classes from Zoltan. He also counseled me during the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale. I went to Zoltan for advice immediately following the February 24th, 2018 incident for which I had been exonerated by the Yale housing managers. I went to Zoltan for advice immediately after I was told by Yale housing director George Longyear that I had been falsely accused of racism and that a group of Yale deans had formed a mob against me to publicly brand me a racist. Zoltan also served as my non-legal but official advisor during the disciplinary proceedings after Yale Graduate School Dean Lynn Cooley falsely charged me with racial harassment in June 2018. Yale Provost Stephanie Spangler told me that Yale Graduate School Dean Lynn Cooley was one of the Yale deans who formed a mob against me to publicly and falsely brand me a racist, racist after February 24th 2018. Professor Zabo's letter is very important because his letter confirms the events of spring 2015 when I was socially ousted from the philosophy department by most of the other graduate students because I stood up for the federal civil rights, the religious expression rights of an evangelical black man, our only person of color job candidate for a tenure track assistant professor position. Zoltan's letter made me cry because he said that he hopes that we would all be able to display the moral courage that I did. All right, so now um, I'm going to actually read, read Zoltan's letter one second. There we go. Okay, great. It's dated June 21st, 2018. To whom it may concern, I am writing this letter to testify that, to the best of my knowledge, Sarah Brosh is a person of good character. The suggestion that she would harass someone based on her race is incompatible with my experience of her character and commitments. I have known Sarah Brosh since the fall of 2014 when she entered the PhD program in philosophy at Yale University. She took a seminar with me in the spring of 2016 and audited another one I co-taught in the spring of 2017. I have also interacted with her regularly as Director of Graduate Studies. After the February 24th incident, Sarah talked to me and asked my advice, and after the May 8th incident, she did so again. After she received the charge letter from the graduate school, she asked me to serve as her non-legal advisor in the disciplinary case. I accepted her request. Sarah is a caring person with a deep personal commitment to social justice. She has a civil rights advocacy resume that goes back decades. She has co-organized three conferences at Yale, one on black political philosophy, one on ideology, and one on mass incarceration. This is emphatically not the profile of a racist. I have always known Sarah as someone who is emotionally fragile and rather unsure of herself. 
She clearly has issues with trust and security, something I came to understand only recently when I learned about her troubled upbringing. Sarah grew up in an abusive family inside of a religious cult and has, by her self-report, been subjected to sexual harassment and assault. Character is a difficult thing to judge. It rarely re reveals itself fully. Fortunately, there is one event I recall when Sarah's decency clearly manifested itself. A couple of years ago, our department conducted a faculty search for a new assistant professor, and one of the candidates we decided to invite as a finalist was an African-American philosopher working on metaphysics and the philosophy of science. During the run-up to the campus visit, one of the graduate students discovered that years ago, this candidate had published on an internet forum some comments against gay marriage. The comments were clearly motivated by his religious views. The reaction that some of our graduate students, the reaction from some of our graduate students was to call a meeting to discuss whether they should demand that the invitation be rescinded. Sarah stood up against those who made this pernicious proposal. She did so despite her well-known and well-documented disagreement with religiously based conservatism and despite the fact that this was certain to alienate her from many of her colleagues. Let us hope we will all find such courage when we need it. Yours sincerely, Sultan Gendler Zabo, Professor of Philosophy, Yale University. Oh, <laughs> it makes me cry again. Makes me cry again when I read that. Really touches me. Really touches my heart. Okay, thank you so much for listening and for watching. I'm going to have a whole bunch of links below, including my PayPal me and GoFundMe links. Please support me as I continue to fight for justice. This is not just about saving my life and my human and civil rights career. It's about restoring civil liberties on college campuses across the U.S., including at Yale, including due process and free speech. It's about stopping the moral outrage industry from getting one more innocent person killed, from driving one more innocent person to suicide. So please help me. We can do this. We are living in a moment of true cultural insanity, but we are going to get through this together and I'm going to stand up to Yale, and I'm going to sue them, and I'm going to stand up to the moral outrage industry, and I'm going to sue as many of them as I can, too. Please stand with me. We can do this. And we have to start standing up for one another. Stand up for your friends, because I promise you, if you don't stand up for your friends, you will be next. I never could have imagined, could have imagined in a million years that something like this could happen to me. I am a lifelong human and civil rights licensed attorney activist. I have never engaged in racism in my life. If this can happen to me, if this can happen to me, it can happen to absolutely anyone. It can happen to you. We have to stand up for our friends when the moral outrage mob, especially the cyber mob, comes for them. We have to stand up for our friends. Okay, please stand with me as I continue to fight for justice. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.